Paper three will be using the 2025 pre-release booklet on energy in the UK from around the Morecambe Bay area and your understanding of your field work. Check this video out where I'm going to go through everything you need to know for paper three going into the 2025 exams. In this video, I'm going to go through everything you need to know going into that paper three exam in 2025. You're going to be taking paper three on Thursday, the 12th of June, 2025 in the morning session. This paper is an hour and a half and it's worth 76 marks. Going into this exam, you should be aware that paper three is broken into three sections. The issue evaluation section uses the 2025 pre-release resource booklet on energy in the UK from around the Morecambe Bay area. When moving on to the fieldwork section, you need to demonstrate your understanding of generic or unseen fieldwork, as well as your own personal fieldwork you should have conducted. The first section concentrates on the pre-release resource booklet that was first available on Thursday the 20th of March 2025. You should have received this from your teachers and already started doing your own independent study. This year's resource is looking at energy in the UK and more specifically a tidal energy project in the Morecambe Bay area. I recently visited Morecambe Bay and the Dudden Estuary and made a specific video for the pre-release. So click on the link above or in the description for a more in-depth outline. Figure one, energy in the UK provides a broad overview of energy consumption in the UK. It details what energy we use, the definition and factors involved with the term energy security, and makes comparisons with the rest of Europe. Figure two, towards a renewable energy future in the UK, gives a summary of the various renewable energy sources, as well as exploring the advantages and disadvantages. It then concentrates on the proposed tidal power project for Morecambe Bay and the Dudden Estuary. This details the locations of this project and mentions some of the considerations involved. Figure 3, the Morecambe Bay and Dudden Estuary Tidal Gateway project, then explores in more detail the various positives and negatives of the project. It compares the renewable energy production benefits, road transport links and money saving positives against the negatives which include the high cost of £10 billion, 25 years construction time and possible damage to the ecosystem and wildlife. The energy trilemma is provided for your consideration when evaluating this project and you should refer to this when you are making your decision. I have produced a lesson presentation and a full Paper 3 mock exam to accompany this year's pre-release. So check out my website or the link in the description for more information. The second section then looks at field work and during this section you need to demonstrate your general understanding of field work principles as well as your own field work investigations. You should expect to see some generic field work questions that give you example data or graphs that you may need to interpret, complete or speculate on how you would change the investigations in the future. These will probably be on topics that you have not studied, but you should be able to apply the main principles of field work that you have learned about during the course. The main structure of how you conduct field work will include an introduction to the investigation. You should be aware of the various methods you might use and why you would have used them. You want to link this with the reliability and validity of the data. Knowledge of how you process data and production of graphic displays of results is also useful. Interpreting and analysing what the data tells you is next, and what conclusions you can make regarding the results. Finally, the evaluation should aim to consider any changes you would want to make to the study in the future. Here are some of the important elements that you should also consider when conducting fieldwork. Primary data is collected by yourself, while secondary data is from someone else or another source. Quantitative techniques produce a numerical value whilst qualitative involves a judgment from the person collecting the data. The type of sampling techniques used may also come up. 
Random sampling involves selecting a site or person to question at random. Systematic samples are taken at regular intervals and stratified samples are taken from different groups or areas to get an overall representation. Reliability is about the consistency of a measure, so will be similar if tested again and again, whilst the validity is about the accuracy of a measure and if it answers the question. When conducting an investigation, a risk assessment must be completed. This assesses the risk to the people conducting the data collection. Common considerations include the appropriate clothing worn for the environment, considering the appropriate weather conditions, appropriate equipment, supervision for younger participants, making sure there's a first aider supervising the field work site, if in a city, awareness of the general public, road and traffic systems, personal safety, and meeting points to avoid participants getting lost. You also need to consider the travel to and from the fieldwork site. You should ensure you've reviewed all the skills you've used throughout your geography lessons as well as in your maths GCSEs. I would focus on your confidence when looking at a range of graphs and charts. You should be familiar with a broad range of these and have some understanding of how to interpret them and knowing how to complete portions would also be useful. I'd also be aware of all the statistical techniques you could use in geography. I would suggest you check out the AQA website to find past Paper 3 papers so you can practice unseen fieldwork questions. The last section focuses on your fieldwork investigations. The most important thing you need to know is the title of your investigations. At the start of each question they'll ask you about either your physical or human geography fieldwork titles. Here are two examples of fieldwork investigations that my pupils have conducted. You do not get specific marks for this, but you need to give your examiner context for your answer. It is also important that you can apply your knowledge of the different sections of your fieldwork. Make sure you know the difference between methods of data collection and methods of data presentation. That summarises everything you need to know going into that third GCSE Geography paper. Make sure you go back and check out my paper one and two video breakdowns, as well as the 2025 pre-release booklet video from Morecambe Bay. Thanks for watching and good luck in your summer exams.